Hi, this is Jamie from uh, Etherspeak, and today we are going through the settings for your MX30 or MX250 to enable uh, your SIP trunks with us. So we'll start first by uh, in the MX uh, software is going to uh, provision SIP servers and ITSPs. Um, we don't need to do anything under SIP servers. That's for talking to other devices on the network. Uh, we will be under the ITSPs, of course. Uh, so I will go through here and uh, create us our first account. So name-wise, uh, you can call it anything there. I'm just going to call it Etherspeak1. The codec profile, uh, we support G711 and G729. Uh, so depending on your bandwidth and your, your own settings um, in your network, uh, you may want to adjust this here, but uh, for ours, we'll go ahead and set it for voice quality here. Um, that just prioritizes G711 uh, first to have the higher quality calls. Um, nothing's going on with the video, so that can stay by itself there. And the default set profile that comes with the MX250 is fine to leave the way it is. Uh, over here is where we're going to create the uh, address for our first box. Now, in some of the guides, they put the multiple uh, servers in the same entry. However, I have found it uh, to be better to put one entry per server entry here. So the first one I'm adding here is sip.iatherspeak.com. Uh, uh, still obviously keeping it on port 5060 for sip. Uh, we don't have any registration uh, requirements down here, so that whole section can remain blank. In the from domain here, uh, what we're going to do is use the following uh, address here, and what you want to put here is your public IP address that we'll be sending traffic to. In the next settings here, these are pretty much just uh, okay the way they are. In the to domain, you can leave the default uh, setting here. The request URI, uh, IP address is selected by default, so that can stay the way it is. Uh, caller ID can stay the way it is. And finally, miscellaneous can also stay the way it is. So actually, the uh, first server is all created here. And at this point, if you had uh, DIDs already from us pointed towards you, you could actually have those DIDs uh, get programmed into your system and be able to receive incoming calls. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply here. Uh, that you always need to hit apply in the MX system to uh, make the change permanent there. The next setting is we're going to uh, go ahead and enable the ALG and SBC settings on the MX. Basically that needs to be enabled if you're deploying your MX behind a firewall. So by default when your box ships it'll have all the private addresses in the system already defined in here. Uh, I recommend clearing out the uh, the networks that are already defined and just adding your local networks. So earlier I was mentioning the port numbers here. Uh, the SBC controller RTP port range, this is what you want to forward down to your uh, to your MX250 from your firewall for the uh, audio traffic. Uh, we notice that it's 21,000 through 21,239. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it as the default there. Uh, the networks, the first setting here checked is fine by default here. Uh, now I'm going to add uh, two, di two different networks here. First, uh, the local network here. You can then either enter the net max length or the, uh, or the mask itself. They'll adjust each other. And we're going to mark that as a trusted network. And if you have multiple sites connected uh, via VPN, uh, MPLS, or whatnot that use this MX250, you'll want to define all your local local networks that will be using this system to communicate through the SIP trunks so that the ALG settings are applied appropriately to uh, all your sites there. The last entry we want to add is basically the default pretty much any which is the which defines the public side here. This one we're gonna uncheck the trusted network and we're gonna check the port mapping here. And this will tell it what to rewrite in the RTP headers to uh, make sure the audio gets through the firewall and you get two-way voice communication. Uh, if this is not done, you generally end up with a one-way voice or, uh, or no audio. Now, since, uh, as a reminder, since we are doing the 
settings here for SBC and ALG, you want to definitely make sure in your firewall that it is that its ALG setting is disabled. So make sure you uh, consult uh, their uh, manuals for disabling that. Some of them you can do it right in the GUI. Some of them you have to actually go to the command line and disable. And some require rebooting to make that uh, effect uh, permanent. Once again here we are going to go ahead and put the uh, public IP that we are going to use for our, our uh, demo system here. The external SIP port is 5060 of course. And we're going to go ahead and match this up to the uh, SBC RTP port range that we have at the top here. Next tab is the RTP mapping. This is basically telling it uh, where to uh, apply these uh, SBC settings. Um, we obviously don't need it to apply the ALG settings to itself here between the local area network, but we do want to have it defined uh, for the uh, public network and the private network and in between those. So now you are set to not only receive incoming calls, but get uh, two-way audio on your calls. The final setting is uh, DIDs, uh, which are your phone numbers. Um, as a reminder, uh, we send 10 digits to your system, so when you program a DID for a user, automated attendant, or something else, um, put it in as the 10 digits. However, we require 11 digits to be sent to us, so keep that in mind when you are uh, designing your dial plan. The nice thing about the uh, dial plane in the MX, it's really easy to work with, so you can add, uh, you'll see a couple different examples that I have here, uh, such as the 10 digit, 11 digit, uh, some people add a 7 digit one and then add the appropriate numbers for them. So we'll go ahead and uh, if you notice on my uh, 10 digit entry here, um, this has uh, 10 digits and I'm basically adding the one for them to make it the full 11 digits that we need there. You probably have this currently pointed either at nothing or at um, a PRI or analog lines or possibly another uh, SIP gateway or SIP provider. Since we're on the east coast here, I'll go ahead and point it at my first server. We'll assume that that one is the one provided in my uh, documentation. Uh, one additional thing uh, I'm going to show in here is the ability to uh, make uh, redundant routes. So to do that, you just right-click the route um, that you want to modify, that you want to add the uh, redundancy to, and we're just going to say new route. And as always, like the other places, uh, when you make your changes, you need to hit apply. So now we have our first server, and if for any reason it couldn't reach the first server, or it'll try to send the call out the second way. If you uh, have ELS DIDs, which are the uh, enhanced DIDs. Uh, that support 911, you'll want to go ahead and take care of that also. Um, that's under um, your uh, provision locations. And now you'll want to be mindful if you have different sites with uh, that are programmed to go through this MX250, you'll want to add each. Here we have uh, Stafford for Stafford, Virginia. So this is what is broadcast to us no matter what the settings for users or other things say, this will be an override for it there so that we receive the proper 911 uh, caller ID and it can be routed to the appropriate uh, local PSAP. Um, it's really important that this uh, information is correct and that you've uh, provided the uh, correct information so that way there's no delay in emergency response. And if you have multiple sites, you'll want to create an entry for each site um, and also have a number registered for each site uh, so that uh, if they're in different cities, different states, it can still get routed to the correct place. Down here I'm just defining the local network that uh, for this emergency service here, which uh, is basically what I defined before from uh, when we were doing our SBC settings. And finally 911, what route do I want to send it to? And just like your uh, dial planning, you can do uh, multiple routes on the 911 also. So if you are programming multiple servers, it is uh, definitely recommended uh, to uh, put 
put the multiple routes at least for the 911 service so that you always have a different path of getting there. So I'll apply that change and uh, that'll go ahead and uh, complete the whole setup of the MX250. Um, if you have any questions, um, please notify us at uh, support at iEtherspeak.com. Thank you for your time.